morning, everyone. <clears throat> Welcome to Coffee Pot Bible Fellowship. It's at Brothers Truck Stop in Cheyenne, Wyoming. We're going to start with a song this morning, and then we'll go to our prayer requests. So if you've got something, uh, feel free to send it in to us. Alrighty, the first song's going to be the old rugged cross. fuel prices and uh, everything that a driver has to deal with on a daily basis and then uh, we're praying for Caleb Rollins 19 year old with stage 4 cancer don't forget we've got a driver with special needs okay um, Jeremy Huey and then we've got uh, Ukraine and the war going on over there and then uh, Mike Roberts uh, has a praise that he uh, got his got his new leg after unfortunately having to get an amputation and uh, we're hoping that uh, he'll be able to come out here and join us out here at the chapel soon 
and then of course we pray for our countries and our leaders and uh, the rest of the world leaders as well so uh, join us for a word of prayer Lord thank you for the stage you've given us um, thank you for the weather for weather we have today um, we pray for our drivers out on the roads Lord you keep them safe um, be with their families as they're out on the road and separated from them be with the drivers that we have with, uh, with health needs right now and with those that are trying to get home for um, various issues Lord be with Caleb Rollins and the uh, cancer. Be with Jeremy Huey. Um, be with uh, be with Ukraine in the war over there, Lord. We pray for Putin. Pray for his salvation. Um, pray for the safety of Ukraine. Um, we uh, praise you for Mike Roberts, and we uh, also pray that uh, you continue to let him heal and recover, Lord. And we pray for our country and our leaders, Lord. And that, uh, Many of them would uh, get saved and uh, lead our country in the correct direction, Lord. And then we pray for the message here today. Pray that uh, the word that is brought is what needs to be brought out, Lord. And pray that we have open hearts to receive with the message, Lord. All this in Jesus' name. Amen. Jerry.
again. This morning, the message is going to be, uh, well, we're going to start in the book of Ephesians, chapter 1, verses 9 and 10. So, t- this morning's message is, uh, why are we here? So, God left his people here as both physical and visible illustrations of the nature and of the person of God. And this, impl- this implies the seriousness of our fulfilling our purpose on this planet. So why are we here? Well, according to Ephesians chapter 1, verses 9 and 10, he says, Having made known unto us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure which he hath purposed in himself, that in the dispensation of the fullness of times he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth, even in him. Let's start with a word of prayer. Lord, thank you for this day that you've given us. Um, be with me this morning as I bring the message, Lord. And be with all of us that uh, we would have open hearts to receive the message, receive what it is that you have for us to hear, Lord. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. So the question we're considering today, well, it's one that's puzzled mankind for many years. And question seems to gnaw at the very soul of man on a daily basis because somewhere in the core of his being he knows that this life must ultimately have a purpose that man must have a purpose if you were to ask people what is man's purpose in existing there'd be a lot of different answers some would tell you that man's purpose is simply to make the world a better place well that's not too bad others might see man's purpose as merely trying to better oneself Well, others may respond with the idea that man is here only to explore his world and to discover himself. But if we go to the Word of God, we see that the goal of man's existence has never been about man himself. According to God's Word, the goal of man's existence, his purpose for being here, is to glorify God and to fulfill his eternal plan. This was the conclusion of of the writer of Ecclesiastes 12 in verse 13 when he said let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter fear God keep his commandments for this is the whole duty of man with that in mind I would like to suggest three answers in the question of why are we here since man's whole duty is to obey and honor God we must assume that the answers to our question must have God as the ultimate goal So let's briefly consider this question today. Man's purpose for being here is to be an extension of God's presence. This is implied by man's creation itself. In Genesis 1, verse 26, And God said, Let us make man in our image, after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. This verse tells us that God created man in his image and in his likeness. That fact alone implies that we are to be a physical extension of his presence in this world. We are created after the likeness of the eternal God. This has both moral and motivational implications. In our morals and motives, we are to reflect God's character. Thus I am to be not only an extension of his life, I am an expression of his character. If my salvation is working externally, then my life is a fitting expression of what God is like. That was a quote by Jack Taylor. And another commentator puts it as follows. He was to be God's responsible representative and steward on the earth to work at his creator's will and fulfill the divine purpose. And James Packer has said, our maker so designed us that our nature finds final satisfaction and fulfillment only in a relationship of responsive God-likeness, which means precisely that state of correspondence between our acts and God's will, which we call obedience. And this was intended in man's conversion. What Satan attempted to ruin through sin, God rescued through salvation. 
His divine nature enables us to fulfill God's will. 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 4 says, Whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these ye might be protectors of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. His Holy Spirit within ensures our knowledge of God's will, gives us peace as to what God's will is in our lives, should be. And in John 16, chapter, verse 13, he says, How be it when he, the Spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. This new man is God's correction for man's corruption. In Ephesians 4, verse 24, he says, And that ye put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Paul said that the new man is created after God. That means it is created according to what God is in himself. That is created after the pattern of what God is. In order for one to be an extension of God's presence in a lost and dying world, they need regeneration, not renovation. There was a London businessman who told the story of a warehouse property that he was selling. The building had been empty for months and needed repairs. Vandals had damaged the doors, smashed the windows, and thrown trash all around the place. When selling it, he had tried to sweeten the deal by telling the buyer that he would replace all of the broken windows and he'd correct all the structural damage and clean out all of the garbage. And the developer that was looking at the property said, uh, you can forget the repairs, don't waste your money. When I buy this place, I'm gonna build something completely different. I'm not buying the building, I want the site. Compared with the renovation that God has in mind, our efforts to improve our own lives are as trivial as sweeping and mopping a warehouse that is slated for the wrecking ball. When we become gods, the old life is over. 2 Corinthians 5.17 tells us he makes all things new. So all he wants is the sight and the permission to build on it. Living according to the dictates of the new man makes the Christian an extension of God's presence in a lost and dying world. In Philippians chapter 1 verse 21 the first part of it says, for me to live is Christ. Well, this is initiated by godly conduct. Ephesians 2.10 says, for we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. 2 Corinthians 5.15, and that he died for all, that they which live should not henceforth live unto themselves, but unto him which died for them and rose again tells us that we're supposed to live for Jesus because he's the one that died for us and then rose again. How professing Christians live their lives determines whether or not they fulfill the purpose for which they are here on this earth. A man in the army of Alexander the Great, who also happened to be named Alexander, had been accused of cowardly actions. He was brought before Alexander, who asked what his name was. And he replied softly, Alexander, I can't hear you, the ruler stated. The man said a little louder, Alexander. The process was repeated one more time, after which Alexander the Great commented, Well, either change your name or change your conduct. And number two, we are to be an expression of God's person. Because our lives should express his character. It is often said of children that he is just like his father or she's just like her mother. Statements like that express the idea that quali qualities found in the child are similar to those that have been observed in the parent. And that should be especially true of Christians. When the world looks at Christians, they should immediately notice characteristics of the Heavenly Father. Our lives should express God's love in a lost world and to a lost world. In 1 chapter 4, verse 7, he says, Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God, 
and every one that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. Our lives should express God's purity to a lost world. 1 John 1, 6 says, He that saith he abideth in him ought himself also to walk, even as he walked. And he's referring to Jesus here. 1 John 3, 3, And every man that hath this hope in him purifieth himself, even as he is pure. Our lives should express God's forgiveness to a very lost world. Romans 12, 17, the first part says, Recompense to no man evil for evil. And in Ephesians 4, 32, And be ye kind to one another, tender heart, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake has forgiven you. So our lives should express his compassion. We should exhibit his compassion on a daily basis to show a lost world who our God really is. God's love for this world should be our pattern. In John 3:16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. God-like love is always and can only be sacrificial in nature. A certain medieval monk announced that he would be preaching next Sunday evening on the love of God. And after the room was filled, and as the shadows fell, and the light ceased to come in through the cathedral windows, the congregation gathered. In the darkness of the altar, the monk lit a candle and carried it up to the crucifix. Then he illuminated the crown of thorns, and then the two wounded hands, then the marks of the spear wound, and in the hush that fell, he blew out the candle and walked out because there was nothing else to say. Well, the idea of the crucifix still shows Jesus on the cross, which is not the status that we have today, but the symbolism in here still holds true. Because if you show the love of God in that way, there really is nothing else to say. That is the ultimate love, the ultimate gift. And we're exhorted to love all people. In 1 Thessalonians 3.12, And the Lord make you to increase and abound in love one toward another and toward all men, even as we do toward you. We should especially express love to those that are perishing, to those that are hurting. Romans 9.3 says, For I could wish that myself were accursed for Christ for my brethren, my kinsmen, according to the flesh. So he's saying that if he could give his own life to save his kinsmen, he would do so. Romans 10.1 Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. Once again, he's saying that he really wants Israel to be saved, and that's his deepest, darkest desire and prayer to God. George Whitefield once said, my prayer today is that God would make me an extraordinary Christian. But he wasn't asking to become a famous Christian. The original idea behind the word Christian is little Christ or, or Christ-like. In other words, a Christian is to be a replica of Christ, supposed to exhibit and exude the um, characteristics and the being of Jesus Christ. Whitefield wanted his life to resemble Christ as much as humanly possible. And in a lot of ways, he succeeded in that. And number three, we are here to be an exhibit. Yeah, easy for me to say. We're here to be an exhibition of God's power. Our lives should be a living testimony to the power of God to change us from what we are, to supply our daily needs, and to satisfy our hearts with himself. J.B. Phillips paraphrases Ephesians by saying, How tremendous is the power available to us who believe in God. When we make firm our connection with God, His life and power will flow through us. And then we see His power to save. In Psalms 107, 2, Let the redeemed of the Lord say so, whom He hath redeemed from the hand of the enemy. 
1 Timothy 1.12, And I thank Christ Jesus our Lord, who hath enabled me, for that he counted me faithful, putting me in the ministry, who was before a blasphemer, and a persecutor, and injurious, but I obtained mercy, because I did it ignorantly and unbelief. And the grace of our Lord was exceeding abundant with faith and love, which is in Christ Jesus. This is a faithful saying, and worthy of all acceptation, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am chief. It's a pretty powerful statement, said by a man who tortured Christians before he was saved, and uh, was probably one of the largest persecutors of Christians at the time, and he obtained mercy from God. And then we see his power to supply in 2 Corinthians 9, 8. And God is able to make all grace abound toward you, that ye always, having all sufficiency in all things, may abound to every good work. We need to remember that as Christians, that's, that's our whole purpose in life. We're here to show the world what Jesus Christ is like, and we're to abound to every good work. Philippians 4.19, But my God shall supply all of your need according to his riches and glory by Jesus Christ. And then we see his power to satisfy. In Psalms 107.9, For he satisfieth the longing soul, and filleth the hungry soul with goodness. And in John 4.14, But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give him shall be a well of water springing up into everlasting life. So man's purpose for being here on this earth, our whole reason for existing on this planet, is one, to be an extension of God's presence, and two, to be an expression of God's person, and then three, to be an exhibition of God's power. So... In our daily lives, it's really not that hard. It's it's not hard to exhibit the qualities of Jesus, to show the world who Jesus is by the way we live. We just follow the rules, be different than the world, and the world will come to see Jesus Christ through our actions. That's all I've got this morning. We will close with one more song by Brother Jerry. I'm just Where are you? I moved it.
Yep. All right, everybody. It's been a pleasure. Praise God daily. Uh, for those of you that joined us online, um, thank you. Um, be sure to send us your uh, prayer requests and messages. Praises. And your praises, yes. And uh, next time you're in Cheyenne, make sure you stop by and see us. Uh, we'll close with a word of prayer. Lord, thank you for the day. Um, be with the drivers out there, Lord. Keep them safe. Um, be with their families as they deal with the drivers that are away from home, Lord. And be with us as we continue our daily life here on earth, Lord. And help us continue to walk and live like you and show you on this earth. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.